we got some requests from my fellow Godellians. So CRISPR is one request. I'm gonna one of our power users, Lao Securities, wants me to look at CRISPR, so I'll have to do that. When you join Godell, you get all my analysis for free. So my promise to Godell users. You have to join Godell and ask there, sorry. Is CRISPR at 47? Really? What happened to CRISPR? Oh, poor kitty, come here. Are you sneezy? Are you sneezy? Come here, my friends want to meet you. <laughs> She's very shy. Come show the people. Come here, mama. Oh, that's a good kitty. That's a good kitty. Yes, that's a good kitty. Yeah, you're sad, you're mad. You're mad, you're mad at the people. You're mad at the people. What? You trying to meow? That's a weak meow, kitty. I love her anyway. I don't care if she's ugly. That's my girl. You can call my girl ugly if you want. I don't care. I don't care. All right, so CRISPR has fallen quite a bit, which is what I predicted. I even wrote in a blog on in jail that I was short CRISPR, and it was a very painful position because it would not go down. And it's finally down a bit. I don't think these guys have any drugs, which is not good if you're a drug company. Turns out you need those. Uh, you need a link for Godel, give me one second. I post it every now and then. Make sure you don't miss it. Join Godel, talk to me 24 seven. There'll be, I'll answer any question you have. And I will completely ignore you on this chat. But if you talk to me on Godel, you can ask me anything. Any stock, I will work for you for free. Amazing, right? Well, you know, you have to get a social media following somehow. If you got rejected from Godel, rest in peace. What? They thought, they thought it was rented, kitty? What? Then you got the new Lambo? Oh my god, kitty! Hey, to rest in peace. All right, this, this is ridiculous. The SEC website is crippled because it, it loads all this XBRL. This is CRISPR. Its market cap is 3.7 billion. That looks more fair. At one point it was like 7 billion. Okay, so CTX 110 is their lead product, but I think this product sucks. People don't really need this kind of thing. CD19, CRISPR. There's a hundred ways to modulate CD19. Yeah, it's also called Exocell. That's the main name. Oh, it's not CD19. It's, uh, I got this all backwards. Exocell is, is different. Exocell is their sickle cell product. Sickle cell beta thal. Which again, with lymphodepletion, it's not what people want. People want to do a whole bone marrow transplant for sickle cell? I don't think so. I mean, some people maybe. You want to be in a hospital for four months, recovering in a clean room? I ain't doing that. Students are welcome in Godel. Students will eventually be traders and vice presidents, so. All right, yeah, so this is like the Bluebird problem, like a lot of cool technology, a lot of sort of half interesting drugs, but to be successful in pharma, you need like one really interesting drug. Yeah, I've always been skeptical of this company. Maybe part of the reason is their stupid name that has CRISPR in it, CRISPR Therapeutics. Uh, I have to uh, go soon, so I don't know if I could do a full DCF, but in biopharma, DCFs are pretty quick and easy. You have to sort of look at the revenue potential more than anything else. Two billion in cash, so that probably makes the bull case a little better. <laughs> um, they also, I think Vertex has Exocell, right? So, if I'm not mistaken, so it's really not their product anymore. Um, so that's not so good. They don't have debt, I'm assuming. No. Yeah, so the, half the market cap is cash. That's really worrisome and telling. 
Godel is gonna his goal is to cover frontier markets. Absolutely, we have real time quotes for Japan, Germany, uh, and eventually um, looking at every market, including Africa, uh, Malaysia, different Asian frontier markets. So if it's got an API, we can put it in. So Intilia, I think Intilia will go up. I mean, I didn't say it was gonna go up tomorrow. I don't know what's gonna happen on the stock market on any given day, but I think you know roughly within a year or so. Until you should have doubled or tripled by then. But I could be wrong too, right? But I certainly don't know what's going to happen to any given stock any given day. I don't think anybody does. Maybe probabilistically they do, but... Okay, so XSL is the main asset here. Let's take a look if we can read. Yeah, it's Vertex's drug. Exagamglogene, Autemcel. Autems? Autotemcel. I spent such a long time in the pharmaceutical industry. I have quite a lot of knowledge built up over the years. I'm happy to share it with you guys. 16 years old, I started following pharmaceutical stocks in 2000. So I've been looking at these stocks for 23 years. And you're welcome to pick my brain on anything pharmaceutical related. I very, very much enjoy sharing all my knowledge. This stock, I, I don't know. I don't like... Uh, IBD and Crohn's is really interesting, absolutely. There's not much economic moat in pharma. It's really interesting, top tier. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. It's kind of a stick and move sector. There are very, very limited uh, moats. For pharma, I like NTLA. I don't have 50 stocks I like in pharma. That's the one stock I'll say I like a lot. And then I'm looking at a bunch of others like RCKT, Rocket. Um, there's a lot of stocks I'm looking at, but there's only one I'll really recommend because I've done a lot of research on it. And all right, I want to look at the data for XSL. So let's take a look at CRISPR Therapeutics Investor Relations. All right, so they actually filed in EMEA and they filed in EUS2. So they, they have approval coming. Let's see, phase file. Okay, economics, phase, IP maybe, uh, admin. Okay, I'm not a big fan of this company, but I want to reserve some judgment and make sure that I am up to date on it. It's important not to let your cognitive biases um, come to play against your, your, you know, whatever you're trying to decide logically. So we got the climb 111. Clinical trial SaaS platform, it depends on what part of clinical trials you're trying to do. Or if you're trying to like do enrollment and study design, then there's Metadata's company. If you're trying to do recruitment, there's a couple companies doing that. Yeah, it's a competitive space, to be, to be fair. I think it's good to follow a niche sector because you can kind of dominate the intellectual landscape for that niche sector. It's hard to dominate the landscape for something as big as pharma. But if you pick something small like just rare diseases or just oncology, you can do pretty well, I think. All right, so this is supposed to be the open label phase three trial, 141 and climb 151. Climb 151 is sickle cell, and climb 141 is beta thalassemia. It's a 60-40 economic split, which is kind of interesting. So they have 40% of this drug. Yeah, Andrew Jones makes a good point. Most stocks are pretty efficient. So you're kind of looking for a diamond in the rough. And oftentimes for every opportunity, I like to think about and try to explain why does this opportunity even exist? I won't get too caught up in that usually, but it is an important question. If markets are efficient and everyone has access to the same data, why is this opportunity there for me and not there for everybody else? And chances are that in fact, there is no opportunity, you're wrong. Um, so I think you have to, you know, use your head, uh, as you contemplate that philosophical question. Yeah. Sometimes the market inefficiency is inexplainable. Sometimes it's because, you know, there's a preconceived notion about a company's, you know, product, you know, there has to be a reason usually for the opportunity. It's a private company, it's a public company, but it failed a different product. So people are assuming the rest of the products suck. There's so many different kind of ways to wonder and think about, well, why is this arbitrage there for me? Fear and panic is, is exactly 
the right one. Usually fear or panic. Panic and fear can go both ways. They can be bullish and bearish, greed and fear at least. All right, so here's the data for the climb studies. 44 people with TDT. 26 had these genotypes. 42 out of 44 were transfusion free, so pretty good. Uh, let's see. 42 out of 44 with TDT were transfusion free. Two had 75% to 79% reduction in transfusions. Pretty impressive, huh? All right, 31 patients with um, sickle cell, 31 out of 31, free of vasoclusive crises. Pretty good. The problem is that conditioning regimen, right? Otherwise, this would be the biggest product uh, ever, but that conditioning regimen is so brutal. And these are not fatal illnesses. So very impressive data, but again, just, just a really vicious regimen that you have to go through. So I'm just kind of kind of trying to do like a what if with Exacel. So I don't know, it's a really low quality forecast, but I'm just kind of curious if they hit this like pretty modest product profile, what kind of um, stock price would we get for the company? Exacel will probably be a niche product. So they would need CD19 or something else to come through. Yeah, this, this could actually be a short. Chris River could still be a short. Unless they charge like $2 million for the patient, which maybe they will. Two million bucks and then they, they could um, maybe get a hundred. Well, that's what I have about they're getting a hundred patients a year. Maybe they get two or 300 patients a year, then it would be kind of worth it. Something like this. Margins would probably be a bit higher too. That 60-40 split doesn't help them. So it would have to be about a five or six hundred million dollar product for CRISPR to not be a short. You can download all my spreadsheets on GitHub, so um, hopefully this helps you navigate some of these tricky investments. I have a model for the top 50 biopharma companies, and eventually I'll get to all of them. But I'm pretty busy doing things for my own companies.